Doğalcılık doğal mıdır? Well, again, thank you so much for inviting me. My name is uh, Charles, and actually in the United States it's pronounced uh, Tolliver. But when I'm in Europe or elsewhere in the world, I often go by Talia Ferro, the way it's spelled. Um, so the question is, is naturalism natural? I've been working on naturalism and theism, the deep questions of philosophy historically, but especially in the modern era, in terms of um, ultimate visions of metaphysics or ontology, theories of what there is, as well as values. And naturalism has, in a way, well, a general definition, naturalism is that only nature exists. More specifically, and here there are two forms of naturalism since the 1950s, really. So about the last 70 to 80 years, there's been scientific naturalism. And then gradually, maybe starting in the 1970s, 1980s, there's been a more liberal, broad-minded form of naturalism. But the most serious form of naturalism in the middle 20th century could be called scientific naturalism. And in this view, nature is understood to be ultimately that which would be described and explained by the natural sciences. This would be primarily physics, also chemistry and biology. Noticeably missing is psychology, history, um, many of the humanities and the like. Now, scientific naturalism um, has been forwarded by Wilfred Sellers, by um, Daniel Dennett today, he's still alive. So scientific naturalism is still a, a formidable position. However, uh, it has tended to be reductionistic, that is, it's sought to reduce things like consciousness, um, the mental reasoning, desires, um, the world of psychology, what is sometimes disparagingly called folk psychology. So that is considered, from the standpoint of scientific naturalism, suspect, kind of like folk science. Folk science, we used to believe in uh, astrology, that the stars would tell us what our lives would be like. That's been superseded by modern cosmology. And so very serious naturalism. I, the other is, forms are, are serious too, but this very um, tough-minded naturalism, um, it runs counter to what many believe to be common experience, including our experiences as science. Science requires scientists. It's very difficult to have science without people. <laughs> and people are subjects that make observations, that engage in reason, that have desires, that come up with theories, and um, reason together collaboratively and competitively, but to try to get the best account of what there is. This, from the 50s, 60s, and 70s, was considered to exclude ethics, um, right and wrong, virtue and vice, as being matters of folk psychology. So at the end of the day, uh, ethics doesn't have a place. Ethics has a place in our practical world of interaction, but not in our ultimate account of what exists. This form of naturalism has come under heavy, heavy criticism um, by more liberal forms of naturalism. Now, what liberal forms of naturalism have in common with scientific naturalism is they take 
the empirical or natural sciences very seriously, but they're together in being denying um, the existence of God or a creator, the supernatural, if you will. There's no soul, there's no afterlife. Matters of religion, whether it's Islam, Christianity, Judaism, um, Hinduism, Buddhism, all these great visions of um, reincarnation, of karma, of the Tao for Taoism, these matters are bracketed both by scientific naturalists and more liberal forms of naturalism. But against strict naturalism, which again does have defenders today, but it's been held that it's too big of a pill to swallow because it seems as though subjectivity, consciousness, desires, beliefs are evident to us. It also seems that values are evident to us, and this is true in the practice of philosophy. I mean, science. In science, you have to value um, reason, truth-telling, um, integrity, um, the, the rigors of argument. So it, the, the, co the price tag of strict nationalism is too high. One philosopher once said that every philosophy comes with a price tag. That is, if you buy this philosophy, you're going to have to buy some other things as well. And um, it's just too expensive. Liberal nationalism um, is more natural in the sense that it's more in keeping with recognizing, in my view, in the view of many, human nature, which is that, uh, yes, we're animals, we're part of the spatio-temporal world, but there is more than is revealed in chemistry, biology, and physics. Namely, there's thinking, feeling, experience, subjectivity, even introspection. So this goes against the strict naturalists who used to be, many of them were behaviorists. So they believe there's just human and animal behavior. This idea of introspection seemed bizarre to them. They preferred the third person point of view, which is the point of view of science. Now in liberal naturalism, they privilege science, and hence the third person point of view. But they do recognize um, consciousness, subjectivity, often values. Many of them are projectionists. That is, they believe that values are what we, human beings, perhaps other non-human animals, project on the world. Um, but the obstacle facing liberal naturalism um, are two. Uh, one is that it still comes with a price, and that price is usually um, a denial that there's any explanation of the cosmos itself. Why is there a contingent cosmos? Why do we exist? Why, why do galaxies exist and continue to exist over time? We've discovered nothing scientifically or philosophically or by observation about the cosmos that would lead us to believe the cosmos exists necessarily. It's contingent. Spinoza thought the cosmos existed necessarily. Some actually Islamic philosophers and Christian philosophers have thought that God was necessitated to create the cosmos. So they actually believe there's a certain kind of necessity that the cosmos be what it is. But the vast majority of um, Christians, Muslims, theistic Hindus, um, 
and actually secular naturalists believe the cosmos is contingent. So one of the matters that face a liberal naturalist, and this is sometimes called um, humanistic or common sense naturalism, is they still don't take up the question of the big cosmic question of why do we exist and the like. Um, also, one might think this way, when liberal naturalism opens things up to more and more apparent realities, subjectivity, even religious experience, the fact that millions of people around the globe historically and today report having some experience of the divine, whether it's God, Yahweh, Allah, the Tao, Brahman, um, and the like, uh, even Jainism and Buddhism, which are atheistic or non-theistic, they have a sense of the sacred. And there's a sense that whether it's nirvana or this actual, um, you know, kind of release of the soul to enlightenment. Um, liberal naturalism has to say those are illusions. Those are not really uh, clues or evidence of some bigger scheme. So liberal naturalists are, are very um, tempting uh, because they're giving you meaning in life. There's Your life is meaningful. My life is meaningful. There's values. We're subjects. But um, these uh, appear uh, from a purposeless and mindless cosmos, a cosmos which has no prevision over the end that it's producing. So all the stable laws of nature that have enabled the emergence of not just life, but conscious life, and life that's moral and religious, and definitely can be agents of evil as well as good, um, none of that has a kind of ultimate overriding explanation. The explanations that are given, of, for example, uh, evolutionary ethics or biological ethics, these projects are very important. But many of us, as well as naturalists, and including atheists like Thomas Nagel, um, very famous um, atheist, but someone who is very uneasy with his his form of naturalism, he thinks we do, we naturalists don't have an explanation for these factors, and um, so you have, and so he as well as um, Michael. Tire, Tire and Galen Strawson, some of them have gone very mystical in a way. They are actually adopting what's called panpsychism, the view that everything on some level has a basic level of consciousness. So you go back to the Big Bang 13.5 billion years ago, and um, you think, well, how can you get from galactic gases and so on to purposiveness and agents, um, language speaking here on this planet? And of the trillions and trillions of planets, I surmise there are other intelligent beings as well. How, how did this come about? And um, so some of them are driven, including Thomas Nagel, he thinks that this is very much like Aristotle, in a way, a, a current version of Aristotle, that he thinks the, the cosmos was not made or created, but its very nature is to create um, life, meaningful life, here, perhaps on trillions of other planets, whatever. Um, but the, then the purpose is kind of found within the cosmos. Now that's um that's progress. That is an 
it's not blindingly new. You can find um, Empedocles, an ancient pre-Socratic philosopher who believed something like that. Now, he also believed in a kind of cosmic God, but he believed that love and hate were actual forces in the natural world. Um, the, I, I say the problem with this is that there's no um, evident um, empirical scientific evidence that we have that you still have consciousness when you move beyond animals with brains and nervous systems do plants, do rocks, do subatomic particles have psychic powers? They might, uh, but it is, um, shall we say, not for the faint-hearted. I mean, you have to be quite willing to speculate about this. You're also positing um, moral absolutes, as it were, part of the very structure of nature. And what theism gets you, whether it's um, Islamic, Christian, theistic Hinduism, or philosophical Hindu uh, theism, like with Plato, what they give you is this idea that goodness is fundamental to reality. The, this idea is that evil, wickedness, is a distortion or dysfunction of that which is fundamentally good. So on this view, tyranny, oppression, sexism, racism, um, our tendency to be, our human tendency to be murderous, to be, to give over ourselves over to manipulation, rape, etc., that these are aberrations. These are dysfunctions. Um, for some naturalists, even for Darwin, um, in his Descent of Man, the later book, he believes that it's quite natural for there to be strong races and weak races, and quite natural for the strong races, this is to use 1800s language, um, to seek to even exterminate the weaker races. And so one worry about biological ethics, if biology alone is your guide, um, well, you can wind up endorsing all kinds of horrors. So the, the, the Nazi um, philosophers, as well as theologians, um, who were dead set about putting theology on the side of um, Nazism, National Socialism, or Fascism, they um, claimed Jesus was not actually Jewish. They claimed that um, Arianism, the superior race, we were, we humans were ordained by God to, um, to rule over the weaker races. So um, the problem with liberal naturalism is where are, where are the boundaries, how can we get a more um, settled understanding of the, the big picture? And also, politically and ethically, how are you going to avoid a, a slippery slope where all liberal naturalists, Richard Dawkins, a very famous, not a philosopher, but um, evolutionary biologist, but very popular in the press, and he said, don't use biology as your guide to ethics. You know, don't, because you're going, to be, you're going to be justifying all kinds of things. We saw in the West, um, with the Industrial Revolution, what we called social Darwinism. This is where the survival of the fittest was considered fair game among you and I, among human beings. Um so is that, um, back to the question, is naturalism natural? Scientific naturalism is using the natural sciences. In that sense, it's quite natural. But the natural sciences alone is not, in my view, true to human nature, which is much broader. 
liberal nationalism much more natural but you're still cutting yourself off from the big cosmic possible answers and questions of why we exist um is there an afterlife all naturalists deny there's an afterlife for individuals or persons for all liberal naturalism the death of any one person is permanent non-existence permanent annihilation there's no soul there's no afterlife and the like that could be but that is um is that part of human nature um the human race we estimate has existed for at least a hundred thousand years homo sapiens literally meaning the wise species sapiens is latin for wise homo meaning human i'm not sure we're the wisest species in any case we have evidence going back to even the neanderthals of reverence for the dead in modern day turkey you have tombs going way back prehistorical uh, in terms of where bodies would be buried with grave goods with food and wine for the for the journey so human beings from prehistorical times to the greeks the romans the ottomans um imperial great imperial powers and lands up to the present there are a vast number of people who find it natural to at least hope that especially when there's premature violent death when their children die when a, somebody you love dies that there would be some hope for redemption beyond death liberal naturalism is firmly anchored in this world that can be good no uh hope beyond this world but um here we are we need to hope and be compassionate with each other and to seek justice with each other and the muslim the jew the christian the hindu um the jain the buddhist um the african traditional religions all these people can secularists we can unite in being concerned for this world here and now justice compassion mercy fighting racism fighting sexism but um it's these bigger world um religions that often give you um a picture that is natural in the sense of being common to the human experience from the beginning of recorded history especially from around 1000 BCE on the common calendar um we have the, the Upanishads about 800 600 you get Buddha you get Confucius you get Socrates Plato Aristotle you eventually come to Jesus Muhammad you get Lao Tzu the mythic understanding of Taoism you get this vast movement in human evolution of conceiving of a greater cosmos in which we find uh human life so I would say if you step back and you ask what's the most natural world view scientific naturalism hmm, uh, liberal naturalism much better but I think liberal naturalism has a price tag and that price can be picked up and explored in these other broader um religious worldviews and other philosophical worldviews as well